And we're back, and I'm very excited for our next speaker. Um, so let me introduce them. Sandra Cohn, with over 18 years experience working in both film and digital f photography, Sandra Cohn has become Seattle's go-to maternity, newborn, and family photographer. This is not on um, the write-up, but she's also the type of person who will sit down with you for a last-minute podcast interview in a parking lot. Um, her award-winning work has been featured in magazines like The Knot and is now part of the Seattle Museum of History. Sandra has also worked as an educator teaching fellow photographers on worldwide platforms like Creative Live. Her talk today is titled, How to B Boost Your Brand Through Better Blogging. Sandra, take it away. Okay, here we go. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Image Salon, for having me. I'm so excited and so honored to be with this amazing group. And I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen now. Let's see. Oh, i got to move that. Okay, so can you guys see it all okay? Yes, yeah, looking great. <laughs> okay, good. Well, then let's do this. Let's get right to it because I don't have a ton of time. I'm going to set my timer because I'm a talker. All right, so let's talk about blogging, you guys. So first of all, before we begin, um, I'm Sandra. I'm an award-winning portrait photographer based in Seattle, Washington, and I specialize in newborns and families and fine art portraiture shot on film. Um, like Bryce mentioned, I'm also an industry educator. And as of this year, I'm actually an author. I have a brand new book that's coming out next week, and I'm really, really excited about that. Now, normally when I teach, what I specialize in is teaching photographers how to build solid brands by learning to create natural looking light with strobes and flash. But I also have like a secret superpower. I'm like really, really good at SEO. And I love teaching about it. I love sharing it with other photographers because it is so powerful. And so today when I was preparing for this, I decided that I really wanted to share something with you guys that was super actionable, that you could sit down at the end of the day or tomorrow and do right away and, and have like a, a positive impact on your business right now. Um, my goal for you is to be strong for you and your business to be stronger on the other side of this than you were going into it. So I want to teach you, um, just one simple way to boost your SEO today. All right. And really just through better blogging. <laughs> so let's get to it. So first of all, what is SEO and why does it matter? Well, SEO, of course, stands for search engine optimization. And having good SEO is really, really important because when your SEO is good, that's how you get on that first page of search engines like Google. And that means that more clients are going to find you because most people don't take the time to scroll to page three or four. Um, so you really want to do uh, be on that first page if you can. And there's a lot of information out there that makes – SEO or building SEO sound really super complicated, but you guys, it doesn't have to be. So according to Google, the number one thing that you can do to boost your SEO is just provide high quality content on your website, right? Like that's pretty easy. And high quality content is just content that communicates to your clients in a meaningful way um, by providing information that they actually care about. So that means creating content for your website that teaches your potential clients about you and your brand, that answers their questions, and that educates them in some way. And what's great is when you're providing this type of client, it really does help establish you as a trustworthy authority in the eyes of your clients, right? It's a great way to turn your website from really just like a fancy advertisement into more of like a customer service desk where you're really just providing good customer service for your clients and your, good, your potential clients. Um, the other good thing about providing this kind of client or this kind of client, this kind of content is that people actually want to read it. And that means that they're going to stay on your site longer, which increases something called dwell time. Now dwell time is one of the like two main metrics that your site is judged on by the like, you know, Google bots power powers that be. And all it means um, is when you have good dwell time is that people are just hanging out 
on your website. So increase dwell time. When people come to your site and they stay there and they read all the things, that tells Google or the other search engines that you have a site that people are interested in. And because it's the job of those search engines to find good content and put it in front of people who are searching for it, when when they see that people are hanging out on your, your website, that's going to bump you up in the ranks. And that's how you start getting on those first pages. Now, there are a lot of places on your website where you can have this kind of high quality, interesting content, right? You can put it on your home page or your about page or your FAQ page, and you totally should. But the problem with those pages is that those pages tend to be really static. Right, those are the kind of things that we write once, and then if you're like me, you post and you don't touch again for years. And search engines want to see new content. They wanna see content that is constantly being added because that tells them that you have a, um, like a fresh, interesting site that people care about. So um, that makes your blog the perfect place to be adding this kind of high quality content, okay? Now, got ahead of myself, but I'll just go there. Okay, so if you're like most photographers, I know, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, Sandra, this all sounds great, but I hate blogging. And I get it, because I used to hate it too. <laughs> but what I say to people now when I'm sharing this, when they say, I hate blogging, I say, that's probably because you're doing it wrong. Now, the number one mistake photographers make with their blog is that they use it really just as an extension of their portfolio, right? Like a place to share those pretty pictures. And I think that this happens because when, when websites first came about and blogging was a new thing, this is kind of how we all use them, right? We'd take beautiful pictures, we'd have a shoot, and we'd want to share those images because we wanted to show the world or potential clients that we were relevant, that we were you know, other people were hiring us that we were constantly shooting. Um, and so we would take these pictures from the session and just put them up on your, on the blog, right? And this is why most people hate blogging because then you get all these pictures and you put them on the blog, but then like, what do you say? What do you talk about? And so you, you spend the time, you format the photos, you post them up, and then you just sit there staring at your screen and you have no idea what to talk about. So this is an example of me making that mistake in my own blog in 2015, where I had these pictures and I put them up on the site and I wanted to share them, but I had no idea what to say and what to blog about. And this is a real wasted opportunity. What I have to say to you now is that your blog is not your portfolio. If you want to be sharing new photos and fresh work, that's awesome. But actually put those photos like up on the Instagram, okay, or in your actual portfolio. Your portfolio is your portfolio, not your blog. Your blog needs to be a place that allows you to start building relationships with your clients. Okay, it's where you teach your clients about you and your brand and you answer all those questions that they may have. Um, and because of the impact that doing that then has on SEO, your blog really is a powerful marketing tool. And so you want to make sure you're using it strategically, not just a place to post your pretty pictures. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And that's what I'm going to teach you. Okay. Oh, I got ahead of myself again. <laughs> See, I get so excited. All right. So best practices for blogging. Let's get into it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're blogging about things people actually care about. All right. So you're going to use your blog to tell your story, right? This is a great place to share a little bit of like who you are, what do you do and why you do it. And this is an example of that kind of a blog post from my own blog. So um, I am a film photographer. I shoot 100% on film, and that's a part of my vision as an artist, but it's, it's also something that my clients need to know about me that they might not think to ask. So that's a perfect thing to make a blog post about, right? Like I can share a little bit of my why, why I do it, why I love it, and inform my clients about what they're going to get if they work with me. Um, now, as you can see, I'm still sharing a photo, right? You can still share that new work and share your beautiful photos. You just share it while also sharing relevant content that people are going to be interested in and actually spend some time reading. 
Here's a newer blog post, but the same kind of idea. So this blog post is called Newborn Photography Without Props. So I'm a newborn photographer, but I don't use props or, you know, like posing or anything in my work. My work is very baby led and naturally inspired. And that's something that I want my clients to know when they're going to work with me. So I wrote a blog post about it and I tell them why I don't use props and then what they can expect to get when they are working with me. And again, yes, I'm sharing photos, but I'm also sharing a lot of interesting, relevant content for my clients and potential clients. You can also use your blog to just solve a problem. So, you know, you answer those questions that you hear from people all the time. So solving a problem like what to wear, how to prepare, best locations, that sort of thing. So here's an example of a blog post that's like that. So this one is what to wear to your newborn session. Like that's solving a problem for my clients. This is a question I get all the time. And to be honest, I'll do a what to wear um, type of blog post multiple times a year because people are always asking it and I always have something new to share a little bit something different to say. I can do what to wear for your newborn session, family session, toddler session, sitter session, maternity session. Like you see there's like all this content, but it's about something that my clients actually want to know about and that they're going to be interested in. Here's another one. Um, how to incorporate older children into a newborn session. This is me answering questions that I get from my clients um, in a way that is going to inform them and educate them so they're going to have a better experience when they come in to work with me. See, it's like, a, it's like what I was saying, it's that whole like customer service aspect versus just being an advertising um, you know, medium. So again, I'm sharing pictures, I'm still sharing my work, but I'm doing it with good high quality content. Um, you can also use your blog to educate your educate your clients about things that they need to know, but maybe they don't know to ask. Um, so here's another one about you know how I work that is really important. My clients might not know to ask. Hey Sandra, um, when we come and work with you, are you going to pose my babies or you're not going to pose my babies? Um, because they just don't know. But I don't pose newborns, and they need to know that if they're going to have a good experience with me. So it's something that I'm blogging about and I'm sharing. Now, now that you know what you should be blogging about, let's talk about the format of how you do it. Because there is an anatomy of a great blog post that's going to give you the most bang for your buck. Okay, so first of all, you're going to want to start with a searchable title, and this is really, really important. So when you're when you're sitting down to write to write your blogs, you want to think like get in the head of your client or your potential client, and what are they sitting down to the computer and actually searching for? You know, I'm a newborn photographer, so when when I can you know imagine. Uh, a new mom or a new dad sitting down looking for a newborn photographer, what are the kind of things that they're going to be searching for? And then you put, you use those things as your uh, title in your blog post. And you want to do that because what's going to happen is then when they sit down and they're typing and they, they put that in and then the Google bots are like scanning the internet and they see that you have those exact words, they're going to send those people to your site. And again, that's going to boost your SEO, but it's also going to pull in the right kind of clients. All right. So coming back to this one, what to wear to your newborn session. That is a title that I could literally imagine somebody typing in to the search bar, you know, like, what do I wear to my newborn photo session? And then that information would come up. It's going to make me look like an authority, like I know what I'm talking about. They're going to trust me. And then we start building that relationship before they ever walk through the door. The beautiful Mayloff family is not a searchable title. So <laughs> this is I'm sharing some some mistakes I used to make in my own blogging um, back in the day. But this is a mistake I see people make all the time, right? Like like um, family portrait photogra photographers will share like the so and so family, or like you know wedding photographers will be like congratulations Jenny and Bob or something like that. You guys, those aren't searchable titles. When you have like um, a client sitting down to the computer and they're looking for a wedding photographer, they're not going to type in congratulations, Jenny and Bob into the search bar, right? They're, a newborn family is not going to type in the beautiful Mayloff family. The Mayloff family isn't even going to type in the beautiful Mayloff family. Like nobody is searching for these. And so this is just like wasted space on your website and the loss of a really good opportunity. 
um, prepare, prepare yourself for the cuteness. Also not a searchable title. <laughs> like, can you imagine like, okay, here I am. I have this beautiful baby. I want to find a photographer. You're not going to search, prepare, search, prepare yourself for the cuteness. Like that makes no sense. So stay away from the cutesy titles, stay away from the, you know, family specific titles and really think strategically and use a searchable title that somebody's actually going to look up on the Google. The other thing you want to do, you guys, and maybe this is like goes without saying, but use words in your blog post. Um, again, I'm coming back to newborns are magic. Also, by the way, not a searchable title. What does that even mean? I don't know, but I wrote it. Um, when and in this blog post, I shared a ton of photos, but I didn't put any words. And again, this is a mistake I see photographers make all the time because they think, oh you know, I'm a photographer and I take pretty pictures and my photos should speak for themselves. But guess what? Your photos won't speak for themselves. You need to put words in, in the post as well, because the bots can't read pretty pictures. Even if you're going in and putting in the metadata, it's not enough. So make sure you actually talk about the things. Okay. Now the good news is when you're using searchable titles, when you're answering questions, when you're doing that kind of stuff, what you're going to find is writing that content isn't going to feel overwhelming. You know, if somebody were to come to you and say, what do I need to know to prepare myself to work for you, work with you, you're going to know what to say to them. And so when you start typing like that, you start uh, strategically blogging, you're going to find that actually writing the stuff is much, much easier. The other thing you want to do for a good blog post is make sure you're using subheadings. Okay. So when you're writing for the internet, um, you have to write in the same way that people read the internet and people read the internet in the palm of their hand, right? Well, like standing in line at the grocery store, or like taking their dog for a walk and they're skimming. So when you're using subtitles to break up your content in your blog post, it allows them to skim. And what I do in mine is I look at whatever my title is. So in this case, what to wear for your newborn photo shoot. And I, I, I um, summarize it. What do I want them to know? Well, I want them to know that with newborns, less is more. I want them to know that neutral colors work best. And I use whatever those summaries are as my subheading titles um, so that if a person came to this this blog post and all they were to do was read the title and then read the subheadings, they would get the gist of what I want them to know. All right. So really important. And lastly is you want to make sure you're ending with a call to action. What do you want those people to do? Once they've read the thing, what do you want them to do? Now for my portrait um, blog, for my portrait clients, I always end with some sort of a book now, you know, contact me, you know, schedule your session now or something like, because that's what I want them to do. On my education site, Sandra Cohn Education, where I'm talking to professional photographers, I'll have a like, download your free PDF or sign up for my mailing list or something like that. But whatever you want your people to do, you have to tell them. So use that space at the end of the blog to do that. What do you know what to write about? Look at your email. Oh, little typo there. Whatever. Look at your email. Okay. So what do your clients ask you about? What are those common questions you get all the time? Like take those questions, turn them into blog posts or, you know, what do you want your clients to know that they might not know to ask? You can also use that as blog content. Oops. Other question. How often should I blog? Honestly, you guys, more is better. Um, especially if you're on like page 15 of Google, like the more you do it, the more you are producing really high quality content and, and turning it over, then the, the faster you're going to um, go up on, the, you know, in the ranking on the search engines. So, you know, the more is better, but more importantly than more is consistency. So what you don't want to do is sit down and write like 20 blog posts, well, 10 blog posts, and then schedule them all for that week, right? If you sit down and write 10 blog posts, that's awesome. Then go in and schedule them so that they're running once a week or once a month um, and really start building that consistency. That's really, really important. Um, really, the takeaway is just be sure to do it, okay? Blogging is a great way to establish yourself as an expert at what you do. Um, it builds trust between you and your potential clients, and it helps you start creating a relationship with them before they ever step in front of your camera. And that's really, really important. It's also completely free, you guys, and it boosts your SEO. So honestly, what's there not to love? Use this time. We're all being given this time 
right now. All right. So use it strategically. Take a little time to just sit down and, and you know, create some blog posts, schedule them out and build yourself really like some fantastic free marketing that is going to start boosting you up on that search engine so that when things do open again, more people are going to be able to find you. Okay. So get to blogging, you guys. Now, to help you out, if you want to like screenshot this or take a little picture with your phone, um, I've created a template for you that that whole like anatomy of a blog post thing that you can download and print out and use it to help guide you to make sure you're using that really good structure. And I also talk about like where you want to use, you know, H1 headings, H2 headings, which I didn't have time to get into right now. So go to this link and download that and then just, you know, get to blogging. Okay. Awesome. That Sandra. was a lot, but that I was, think I That's perfect. You're right on time and we have enough time for questions, which is good because there's a lot of questions. I think like SEO and like blogging is one of those subjects that photographers are like, I don't know how to do. Give me all the tricks. Um, so first question, how do you title your images within the blog? Um, so for example, are you doing something like Seattle newborn photographer 001.jpg? <laughs> I mean, kind of. Um, so I talk about that a little bit in the download that I'm giving. But yeah, so you want to use your name. You want to use your location, right? Those two are really, really important. And then you want to have a little bit of a description, something about the photo, right? Um, so newborn baby sleeping on a bed or, or whatever to really just the more words, the better, because again, bots can't read pretty pictures. Nice. Um, do blog titles need to be exact search words or similar words are good enough? Similar words are good enough. Although there have been moments where I've had uh, people come into my, my studio and say something or ask something. And I've like literally written down their exact words. Cause I'm like, Ooh, that's such a good question. And like, totally searchable but you know you want to get the idea you know just so to make it easy for those algorithms to match you and your content with the people who are searching for that um, I have uh, another one from a wedding photographer who's asking that um, they shoot weddings a lot at the same venue a lot how do you add a unique voice to the blog then okay so you're at the same you're at the same venue a lot and how do you what I'm sorry yeah, I like I think um, sometimes with blogs like when it starts to get like repetitive like how do you keep like a freshness to the blog yeah, post I think. so you know what you could do is you could still share those pictures from that venue and mention the venue you know wedding photographers are like dress by venue at you know that that sort of thing um in your blog post which i think is important but i think you know again start thinking about those questions that that people want to know so maybe you're sharing pictures from that venue but the blog post has nothing to do with that venue Right, like I did that post about why I shoot film with a picture of a baby. Um, I'm not, you know, you know, it doesn't have to be quite so literal. So you could share those pictures, you know, in your blog post, but answer a question like, you know, you know, five things you need to know when choosing your venue. And I'm gonna, like I'm gonna sneak this last question in because I think it's a good one. Um, do you spend more time on blogging than Instagram, and do you feel blogging translate more effectively into new clients? Um, I think blogging, I, I built my business on SEO and blogging is how I've gotten myself on the first page of Google for I don't know, 10 years or so. So I think it's really, really important. Um, what I do a lot of times for as far as like blog to Instagram situation is I will just copy paste. So you can reuse your content. So if you've, you've spent time and you've written something really good on your blog, just copy it, paste it into your Instagram, you know, shorten it up a little if you need to, and you're done. And because different clients are going to consume content from different places. So it's okay to diversify and it's okay to reuse content. Awesome. Well, Sandra, thank you so much. It was nice seeing your face today. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on a copy of your new book. Thank you. It was so good seeing you too. And thank you, Image Salon. This has been such an amazing experience and I'm so honored to uh, be a part. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Thank you too. Bye. Okay. Another quick break and then we'll be back with Tyler working. <laughs>